Hey, this is Nuno from Automated Marketer, and today we are gonna have a tutorial on how to be prepared for 2024, especially with the big rules of Google and Yahoo coming into effect, and how you can avoid your emails from going into spam and improve your deliverability all at once. So make sure you stay tuned and build along with us. All right, so first and foremost, there's nothing to really worry about because we've been following us all along on this channel. We've actually shown you how to kind of prep for this really early on because these are not new rules that they're implementing it, but Google and Yahoo are gonna start enforcing certain security policies to ensure that they keep email spammers out of their inboxes. So there's four major changes that we're gonna cover today and you're gonna wanna stick around to the end of the video because we're actually gonna show you how to get ready for this and how to pretty much install the records that are required with a little bit of like kind of coaching in like what you need to do to get ready for 2024. Again, a lot of information on this. We're going to try to keep it light, but more importantly, you got to make sure you follow these things if you want your inbox deliverability not to be affected. There are four major changes that Yahoo and Google are going to be implemented. And since they control the majority of the actual internet, it's going to be important that we listen to it. Right, so the first rule is they're asking you to install three additional security records, a DKIM, an SPF, and a DMARC. Super important because these are the ones that control the security inside of your inbox. Now, the second rule is they wanna make sure you're sending from a verified domain, meaning a domain that's actually been verified by you claiming your ownership to that domain. The third is gonna be that you have a one-click unsubscribe process, meaning there is no more chances where all of a sudden I click on the unsubscribe and it goes to a preference. Unsubscribe from this one, unsubscribe from that one, and so forth and so on. And each email book sender is going to have a different rule about that. So you're going to want to make sure you keep intact with whatever your email book sender is doing. Now, when I talk about email book senders is your active campaign, your convert kit, your mail gun, your LC mail, your send grid, all of those are going to follow the same exact rules. If you are sending any kind of bulk, meaning a mass kind of email, and that's anything over 50, 100, that is considered a mass. And even though the early on kind of requirements are saying it's only for people that are sending 5,000 in bulk, every person that I've talked to in this email space is claiming that they feel like it's going to affect anybody that's doing any kind of bulk sending. So it's going to behoove you whether you have a large list or a small list. As long as you're sending bulk emails, you're going to have to do these changes. And then the fourth is you have to keep your spam rate down. And the way to do that is to make sure you have a very engaged list along with those other things that we're going to be showing you how to do today. Now, the days of I got this really big list, you know, I've been collecting it over the years. Yeah, but if your list is only responding 20% of the time, that is a very bad list. You're going to want to make sure your open rates are in the 40s and 50s, and you're going to want to make sure you're only setting to engage clients. So there's got to be some kind of rules you set up with whatever email bulk sender you're providing in order for you to do that. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to kind of give you the general overview, but every service, whether it's ConvertKit, Mailgun, LC, SendGrid, any of those services are going to have their very own specific rules and kind of guides on what you need to do to ensuring that these records are all going to be there and you're all set for 2024. But this is apparently going to be enacted in February. And I got to be honest, I've kind of been already seeing a couple of people's emails dropping. And I'm kind of fearing that it is because of this. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Again, you're going to want to stick to the entirety of this video because we're going to show you what to do. Now, starting with those three records. Now, if you kind of go into your Google right here, and if I type in, remember, the three records are your DMARC, your DKM, and your SPF. Now, I have a video on this in the channel that shows you how to install, but we're actually going to do it from scratch because we want to make sure you fully understand what this is. The first is the SPF. If I literally type in, because I have Google Workspace, or if you have Microsoft, whichever ones you have, the professional email that you're sending out of. Now, people that are using a bulk sender, right, like Active Campaign ConvertKit, and you're now emailing from a free email account like nuno at gmail.com, that is not going to fly in 2024, at least not with the early kind of speculation that everybody's having, which is you need to make sure that if you're saying you're sending from domain ABC, you got to make sure you have an email from domain ABC that can receive and can be verified with these digital things that we're about to do. If you don't, I would strongly suggest investing in Google Workspace. You can get the $6 account. We'll leave the link at the bottom to make sure you do that. And I would just start with a very basic, easy to use, first time professional email address. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna talk about the SPF record. So I use Google, so I'm literally gonna type in Google SPF record, okay? And if I type in Google SPF record, Google support right here, is gonna tell me what to do if I have Google how to add a record for this particular security. Now, an SBF is basically who has permission to send on your behalf. Since I am paying Google and they're giving me a domain that I can leverage email out of, and now they're giving me a professional email address, I have to ensure that in my domain records, meaning if my domain is nuno.com, that I am basically giving them permission that's saying, 
hey, if you get an email from my email address, Nuno has permission from Google to send it. And I've given them that permission. So when I come in here and I see that, okay, well, here's what you have to do. In order to add an SPF record, you're gonna do a text record and here are the values you're gonna do. So I would go to my DNS domain provider, Namecheap, GoDaddy, SiteGround, Cloudflare, whatever it might be that you bought your domain and wherever you're managing your DNS records, which again, in Cloudflare, if I come in here, I go to overview, I pick my domain, and then I immediately go to records. And there you go, I have my DNS records. Now, I first wanna make sure that I don't have this in here first. So sometimes you can search the records, other times you can hit control F if you're on a PC, or you can hit command F. And you can see a little type bar, it might be a little cut off, but if you see the top bar, I'm just gonna type in SPF. And if I type in SPF, it's gonna show that I already have one, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't have one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna delete this record. All right, I'm gonna hit delete and I'm gonna add it with you guys like that you guys see it. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna copy that, but it's gonna be the same value. All right, now I'm gonna come in here and add a record. Again, I'm gonna select text. Yours might look slightly different depending on the service you're using. Yours might already be in there. If it's in there, awesome. I'm gonna kind of go over what you wanna make sure you see in order to make it good, right? Now, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use the at symbol because the at symbol is the root domain. This domain that we're using right now is Rapid Active Media. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure it matches that root because if I have Nuno at rapidactivemedia.com, that is basically the domain that I'm gonna be using sending out and receiving emails. Now, I should already have all my Google records because if I didn't have them, then I wouldn't be able to send emails out already. And when you get the Google service, a Google Workspace service or a Microsoft 365 service, they walk you through this process and they help you add these records automatically. Now, because we're doing it raw, meaning I'm doing it here and I'm not using that service, I went in and I literally Googled add an SPF record to my Google or Google SPF record, and it immediately brought me into here and it included some values. Now, in here, you have the content. I'm gonna literally come over here. I would copy and paste this green right here, okay? And I'm gonna paste it right in there. Now, notice it has this important part right here, which is include underscore SPF dot Google. Now, Google, because it's giving me permission to send on their behalf, I have to include Google. If you're doing Microsoft, yours is gonna look slightly different. It's gonna do include whatever the Microsoft SPF is. Now, here's an important distinction and I wanna make sure you guys understand, and this is where things might get a little complicated for you. If you have a bulk sender, meaning convert kit, active campaign, there is going to be a part where you're gonna give yourself a little bit of space, all right? And this is the normal record you would have if you didn't have one and you had to have one fresh. If you are sending from whatever email service provider, you have to find out what their SPF record value is. Now, for instance, I'm using Mailgun. So my SPF value is gonna be right after the number one is include colon mailgun.org. And then I put another little space and I keep Google. This is saying that, hey, Mailgun and Google are allowed to send from this particular domain. Now, if you're using Active Campaign and ConvertKit, you definitely wanna make sure you add these and you're gonna to have to find out from them what those values are. Before, the bulk senders sometimes didn't have this as a requirement, so this is also fairly new to them and you might need to go ask their customer support and literally the question to ask, hey, what records do I need to add for the changes with Google and Yahoo for 2024? Pray that you get a good customer service person and then they're gonna give you the values that you need to make sure you either adjust or you add. So that's the first record. I come in here and hit save and now my SPF is added. Again, this is giving permission who to send on what behalf. The next record that you have to add is what's called a DKIM. A DKIM is basically a digital signature that the email service provider is going to provide you. So for instance, Google will provide me a DKIM for Google. Microsoft will provide you a DKIM for Microsoft. Now, if you're using Mailgun or using SendGrid and using a couple of these other services, they're also gonna provide you with a DKIM specific to their service. And this is the way it works. An email gets sent from an inbox and it goes directly into your inbox and then from there, there is a robot that validates these things. The first thing it's gonna check is, hey, I just got an email from Google. Are they allowed to send it on your behalf? And if you have the SPF and it says yes, they actually are because it says include underscore spfgoogle.com or the Microsoft one or the ConvertKit one or whichever one it is that you have, it says cool, I see that they're allowed to send on behalf. 
The second thing it's now going to check is, okay, well, do they have a digital signature from said company to come on in? And the answer is either going to be yes or no. So when it comes to Google Workspace, you have to get the DKIM in the actual Google Workspace admin part of your account. So for instance, let me just drop this down a little bit here. I'm going to open up a tab and in here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in Google admin login. Okay. I'm going to come in here and I can go ahead and sign in. So you see on the screen, this is my Google workspace admin area. And in here, they do a great job that I just have to hit DKIM and it brings me to the DKIM authorization. Now, because I have a lot of my different domains in here, I would select the domain that I'm trying to get the DKIM for. I would just select here, let's just say, and in here, this is going to be blurred out. It's going to give me the host key, which in this, when I create the record, I'm going to hit add record. This is going to be a text record. Let me grab that again. It's going to be the first part, which in this place, it's going to be Google dot underscore dot domain key. All right. That goes into the name area. And then it's going to give you your actual DKIM key that you're going to leverage in here. And you're going to put it under contact. Now, this will all be blurred out or I'll just regenerate my key. But the point of it is, is that this is what you need to do. Once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit the save record. Now you might have different domain keys because you're using different services. So for instance, I now have my Google domain key. I have my SPF for Google, but most likely I will also have an SPF for my branded domain with Mailgun because they automatically give me those records when I create the Mailgun or LC account. So for instance, I'll have an SPF for Mailgun because I'm using what's called a subdomain, meaning a part of my domain that's just strictly for that email service. And I'm using replies in that in this case, and they will give me a specific record for that domain key. So for instance, here I have my domain key for my replies, which is being used by Mailgun. And notice I have the SPF and I have a domain key. Now, if you're doing this right, and if your email bulk sender provides this, you'll be in the clear. So you should see an SPF from like your ConvertKit or Active Campaign, and you should see your SPF and your domain keys from your actual Google Workspace or Microsoft account. Now, again, this is why we recommend not using a free email service because this is gonna be one of the requirements because there's gonna be no way that they can validate a DKIM and an SPF if it's not in a professional email address. So make sure you look into that, whatever service you have that you're having these records at. Now, I added my SPF, I added my DKIM provided by Google, I have the ones from my Mailgun, which is my bulk sender. I have it for my SPF and my DKM for that. So I'm in the clear, but there's one more record that kind of applies to the entire account, which is a DMARC record. Now I can come in here again, and if I Google, Google DMARC record, all right, it's gonna pull up. And again, Google support, it's like the first one. All right, and I always go to the actual support site of whatever the email services that I'm using. Here should say Microsoft when you look into this. Now, this one is, again, regardless if it's Microsoft, regardless if it's anybody, it's going to be the same for everything. Now, again, you can get very into the DMARC rule because there's three different levels of it. There's a quarantine, there's a reject, and there's a none. But unless you're an absolute email expert, I would recommend just going with the none for now. It's the bare minimum of what you need. And basically what it is, if this is set to none, the way these three work. First, remember, the email gets sent out from whatever bulk sender you're sending it from. It hits the inbox of the person you're sending it to. That inbox is going to check for these three records. First, it checks your SPF to see, hey, is this person allowed to send on the behalf of the email I just got? And again, if you're saying you're sending it from Google and then Google is allowed in your SPF, it's going to be a thumbs up and it's going to pass the first test. The second test is, well, okay, if Google's allowed to send, it should have a digital signature that this person's claimed. So it checks for the digital signature, which is your DKIM. Now, if you're sending for Mailgun, it would be the same thing. If you're sending from ConvertKit, purchase the SPF to ensure that you have permission to send ConvertKit. And then secondly, it gets the DKIM. And then the third is, okay, well, what happens if they don't have either or? What do you want me to do with the email? You can set the rules to quarantine, reject, or none. Now, are the easiest and current recommendation, at least from us, is to put it as none. But again, consult with whatever email provider you want with an email expert and they might feel differently. But we use none because again, we let the inbox decide. Because if you use none, it basically gets there. Okay, they broke the rules. What do you want me to do with the email? When you put it to none, the inbox decides. And that's what we're going to let happen. All right. So for this one, really simple. I come in here. This is going to be the value. The only thing that you do a little bit differently on this one is you add a record. It's going to always be a text record for these records. Okay. I come in here. I do an underscore D M A R C. Okay. Because that is the D mark for the entire domain. 
And then I just paste those values that I see. What this DMARC does is it actually sends reports to the user and you're gonna need a special tool to actually read what these reports are. If you wanna receive the reports, now you can go ahead and do that. Just put your email address here and you're gonna get a lot of reports. So I'm just gonna fair warn you, right? So I put Nuno at Nuno.com or whatever the email is here. And just be prepared that your inbox is gonna get flooded with a bunch of these DMARC reports. Again, try to figure out how to do them. If you don't wanna receive the email reports, after a while, just put in none. Pretty cool information, but you gotta, you gotta know how to read them. And this is definitely not gonna be that. That's a very long-winded and I'm not that guy to do that, but this is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna do. And then you're gonna go ahead and hit save. That means that your DMARC is added, your DKAM and your SPF. But remember, you also gotta monitor your spam rates. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna kinda lower my tab here a little bit. We're gonna go to Postmaster, actually gonna do Google Postmaster. And this is a free tool that you can have access to that basically, if you come in here, you can add a domain. Now see here are all the domains I have, but I don't have this one in question. If your domain's been verified by Google, it will automatically be added. If it's not, it's gonna ask you to add a record, which guess what, verifies it. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna hit the little plus sign. I'm gonna put rapid active media in this case. Okay, we're gonna see if it pick it up right away. Well, I got a spell right, All right? I'm gonna hit next. See, it's not verified, so now, I can actually do this record. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna do a text record. This is gonna be at the app because I want this verified. And it's got a Google verification record. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. If I did that right, I go back to my Google Postmaster. I hit verify, boom, and it's been verified and added. Now, I don't really send email, so there's not gonna be anything in here. But when you start sending mass email, you can look back to 120 days and it looks at the volume of spam reported. So you can do this by checking your IP reputation, your domain reputation. It should be high because it's old, but we've never used it for email and so forth and so on. And you can check for everything else. The one you're gonna be monitoring that's gonna be important is the 3% that you're actively looking for. And I believe if you look at anything, yeah, it's gotta be 0.3%. So it's less than 3%, it's 0.3%. If you look like right now, I'm looking at Postmark app. If you look at Google's guides, there's literally guides on this for 2024 because it is gonna be that important. So whether you're using Active Campaign, Mailgun, Lead Connector, all this, it's gonna be super important. We added the records, right? We added our DMARC, our DKM, and our SPF. We installed Google Postmaster so we can monitor to ensure that our spam rate stays below. And obviously we're gonna write quality emails because we're only gonna be sending emails to our engaged list to keep our spam rate down, especially during this transition. And then when it comes to the one-click unsubscribe, that's gonna be something that each service provider is gonna have a different take on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you check in with your active campaign and your convert kits and your mail guns and your LCs to find out what's being done about that because you wanna make sure that you're being compliant when it comes to 2024. Covered all four big changes, right? We verified our domain because we use Google Postmaster and it required us to do a domain verification. And again, you might need to do a domain verification with your email bulk sender. Like for instance, because ConvertKit has never had anybody do this, it wasn't a requirement back then, they might need you to do this now. So again, you're gonna to wanna to email and find out what you have to do, and they might make you have to verify the domain with them. If you're using LC and Mailgun, nine times out of 10, they're also gonna make you use a Google Workspace or some kind of like Microsoft account. And when you open those kind of accounts, a Google or a Microsoft, it usually includes a verification. So make sure you're checking with that. So domain verification done, three main records added. And once again, you're gonna check with your bulk sender and what those different rules are, then you're also going to ensure that you have a one click on subscribe. Again, depending on your bulk sender, you're going to follow their rules. And then the fourth is you're monitoring your spam rate and you're only sending to engaged lists and you are rocking and rolling for 2024 and you'll be ahead of the pack. So hopefully this was helpful. So please make sure if you have questions, I try to get to all the comments, drop them in the comments below and we'll make sure we'll guide you in the right direction. And also make sure that you check out our community feature inside of YouTube where we're now also checking in there. So please, anything we can do to help, making sure that we get your email deliverability top notch when it comes to 2024 and we'll see you on the next one.